chapter of instruction. Biglang nag-shutdown lahat. 464. Walang freedom. Proclamation 1081. Major industrial project. GDP. Unemployment rate. The inverted pyramid. Real estate. Paintings. Communist uh, insurgency. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Hey, hey, Janina Vela here. Sa part 1 ng video na to, pinag-usapan natin ang media, ekonomiya, judiciary system at communism sa panahon ng martial law. Ngayon, pakikinggan natin ang mga kwento tungkol sa human rights violations na naganap noon. Personally, walang nakwento ang mga lola at lolo ko tungkol sa first-hand experiences ng abuse, torture, or killings. However, it does not mean that because my grandparents did not experience human rights violations that none occurred. Parang sa pandemya natin, kahit at hindi ka nagka-COVID, hindi ibig sabihin na walang COVID sa mundo. One's peace should not invalidate another person's suffering. Ang ina-arrest noon, they just arrest you without warrant. Oh, arrest, search, and seizure order. And they detain you. No, walang aso even. And then they also free you without anything. Lucky for me, I did not get arrested at all. I was never in prison. Lucky for me, I was not injured in any firefight. I was never a military cadre. I was not a member of the New People's Army. I was a political officer. Dadating ang isang katutak na metro ko, gigisingin kayo, gabi, natutulog kayo. Mas siguro mga ilang streets yun. Papipilahin sa gilid ng street. Tapos patatanggalan ng damit para makita kung may armas. So it's not the state of the nation address. It's sinosona nila, parang zoning eh. During my time din, namatay yung mga kababa- kabataan na may paninindigan, no? People as, long, as young as yourself, for example, at that time, disappeared, tortured, you know, etc. and killed. So there is no justification for that. So kung, kung, kung talagang peaceful kami, it was just a disciplinary action, bakit may patayan? Bakit walang due process? Interesting yung sinabi ng history prof ko. Sabi niya na mahirap pang pag-usapan ang martial law dahil buhay pa ang mga namahagi noon. The perpetrators are still living in well and have the power to revise history. Kaya importante habang pinakikinggan natin ang mga kwento, tignan rin natin ang mga datos. Ayon sa Amnesty International, there were 107,240 primary victims of human rights violations. 70,000 people were arrested, mostly without reason or without warrants of arrests. 3,240 were killed by the military and the police. And 34,000 people were tortured. Sa amin, mga kababaihan, marami kaming sinamantala, marami kaming na-rape. Pinaplansya ang talampakan. Uh, there is the San Juanico Bridge treatment. Uh, you are, your head is on one stool, your foot is another, and there's a bayonet in between. <laughs> Pag binaba mo, likod mo, matutos pa. Meron talaga. Dito, kasi dito sa city, ganun yung form nun eh. Yung uh, kukulihin ka, ito torture ka. Ayan yung mababalitaan namin, nabubuhusan ng tubig. They pour water until you are in the brink of drowning. Aside from uh, electric and electrocution. They use a field telephone. They crack it and uh, <laughs> it sends electric electricity to your body. Wow. They attach it to private parts even. You know, I met Romy Crismo when I was 12, 1980. Eh, nagpakasal kami ni Romy Crismo. Nung auditor siya ng Commission on Audit, binibisita siya ng isang major at isang colonel from the Philippine Army. Bukod sa auditor siya sa COBA, he was teaching accounting uh, courses. Sa pagkikita daw nila, kasi makikita mo eh. Kita, ay, yan si sir. Umupo na sila. Tapos naantay nila. After three minutes, dapat three minutes, ando na siya, or five minutes. Wala pa. E di, naglabasan at sinisilip. Wala na. That was the last time they saw him. That was the last glimpse of him. Barely four months after our wedding. He was abducted by military plainclothes men. Ano, basta dadamputin ka na lang, kukunin ka. Ganon ang mga na, na-witness ko noon. I was arrested without uh, <laughs> any order. But after my arrest, they issued an order. They brought me to a camp, blindfolded. You don't know where you are. 
and for 10 days nobody know, knew where I was. Ako, I spent seven years of my life almost full time looking for him, of daily going, daily, as in daily, sa provincial headquarters. 23 lang ako na. Ako, ako, Janina, napakahirap talaga. Kasi gusto nila maging, ano ako, mag-DPA, ano, sa flag. At I still remember the phrase, there is no scintilla of evidence that connects Attorney Moncupa to the CPT or FDA. And they still detained me for more than a year because I refused to be a DPA. I, I have a deaconist friend as well, younger than I am. Nagbabible study lang. Napagbintangan siyang nagtiteach in. They found her body in Tarlac. Ilo mo, dami niyang, dami niyang tama ng bala, nakahubad pa. Nakilala lang siya sa graduation ring. She has a grave. Pero si Romy, wala siyang grave. At there are hundreds of them. Yung mga tinorture, who lived to tell their story, diba? Yung mga ni-rape, who lived to tell the story, eh talaga naman, hindi nakakayanin ang dibdib mo. Hindi mo yun mawawala sa yung sistema, sa yung isip. Kasi nga, walang closure. I kept hoping and hoping and hoping against hope. Over 40 years, Kasi hanggang ngayon, wala naman napaparusahan sa perpetrators of martial law. E kung meron mang reparations na naibigay, na of course nakatulong sa sa mga biktima, somewhat, it can never compensate for the lives lost. Ang Human Rights Victims Reparation and Recognition Act of 2013 or Republic Act 10368 ay isang effort for reparation para sa mga biktima ng human rights violations during the Marcos regime. In extend ni President Duterte ang effectivity nito from May 12, 2014 to May 12, 2018. The Human Rights Victims Claims Board or the HRVCB was able to approve and duly recognize 11,103 legitimate claimants out of the more than 75,000 applicants. Kaso lang 6,737 lang yung na-resolve at naka-receive ng 75,000 pesos. Siguro may mga tanong lang ako kasi kung wala talagang human rights violations na naganap noon, bakit at paano tayo nagpasa ng Reparation Act? Bakit bumuo tayo ng Human Rights Victims Claims Board at bakit inextend ba ni President Duterte mismo ang effectivity ng act? It's very interesting po. You can laugh at these things. Parang para sa akin ang bigat. Tapos para sa inyo po, parang it's, you can laugh at them. Yeah, I don't want to add to their victory. Wow. That's <laughs> good. I understand. <laughs> or to their oppression. Um... I want to ask for may mga regrets po ba kayo sa actions niyo noon? No, I worried to so bad so far. I was working in the church, you no. Know? Well, I never regretted having been part of the movement for change. No, not at all. I wish I uh, I was braver. <laughs> Ang medyo lang nalulungkot ako. Sometimes I think I have not done enough. Sana baka naman, baka naman kung mas mahusay ako ng worker ay baka naman mas nabawasan itong mga mga atrocities na, na mga nangyari. Ay. Walang ano pang klaseng economic growth, infrastructure, disiplina, at kahit financial compensation ang mga pag-justify ng paglabag ng karapatang pagtao. Trust me, I know that nobody in this period of time or in the history of the Philippines was perfect, enemy or savior. The retelling of the oppression of the Marcoses does not negate the oppression from any other political family. The fight for never again, never forget is not about the condemnation of one family nor the glorification of another. This is about the fight for the justice that Filipinos never got. It is said that history is written by its victors. The hope is that retelling these stories will be a weapon against historical revisionism. So history will be written by the people and we can finally claim and live in the victory over an oppressive dictatorship. Ngayon na anniversary ng EDSA People Power Revolution, wag nating kalimutan ang pinaglaban natin bilang mga Pilipino. Wag nating sayangin ang kapangyarihan natin bilang malayang mamamayan. Anyway, sana lumiit ang martial law knowledge gap natin kahit konti.
I will see you guys later and let's all be a little kinder. Bye!